Hey there guys, uh, Vlad here from Review Outdoor Gear on YouTube. Today we've got a little tutorial for you guys um, on how to make something similar to this here. This is the Glide Cam we've been using to shoot some of the videos we've got on our channel. Um, it's homemade. Um, we made a little short video about it a few months previously, kind of explaining a little bit about it, but people have been asking for a detailed tutorial. So today we'll kind of take you through the steps of how you can make one of these yourself. Um, we've got some materials here, uh, just, just things you can find around the house and buy for a very small amount of money. And you can build one of these very, very cheap and it will be very much comparable to the actual device. So here we go. So what I'll do is I'll go through each part of the glide cam and explain to you how I made them and which materials you can use to make them yourself. So starting from the bottom, we have here, this is called the base plate. Basically this needs to be some piece of sturdy material, metal or wood, like I had previously, um, about 14 inches long. I mean, this is for this specific one. It's about there. Um, basically it needs to have a one hole in the middle where it attaches to the bottom, to the shaft here, and just a couple holes on the outside where you can attach your weights. And if you want, you can attach the little feet. Those are it's not really needed for the actual function, but it just kind of stands upright. Um, this piece here, I actually had a friend mill for me on a CNC machine, so it could be a little bit harder for you guys to get, but a piece of wood works just fine. I had this one earlier. It worked just well, which is kind of a sloppy job, but you can make one nice. I painted it here. Um, and then just it goes on the bottom there. Uh, for the weights on each side, you need equal amount of weights, and that that's determined by your camera weight and the size of the the whole device here. But what I use is just a couple of washers here um, attached to the base plate by these holes and some wing nuts here. Basically I went to the hardware store and just got some really big washers and I weighed them out to be about all the, about the same weight here. And drilled some holes in the ones that are a little bit heavier. These are just about 70 grams each. Um, and then you can attach as many of these as you need when you're done to balance your camera and then they just go on here with a nut um, and a bolt just stack them on there like that. So the next piece of the glide cam obviously here is the main shaft onto which you attach your base plate and your platform on top here and gimbals right here. The best material I found to use for this is tripod leg as you can see here. I just had an old tripod laying around at home that I tore apart and got the pieces off. You can find them at a thrift shop for five, ten bucks maybe. Um, just kind of tear them apart and take the pieces you need. Uh, basically you need something that ex that's extendable. You can kind of adjust the length of and fasten so it doesn't move around. You set it down. Um, so for about an average weight camera of about 3 to 6 pounds, you'll need maybe 10, 10 inches when it's closed to maybe 15. Just to get, have a pretty good range there. That'll be important when you're actually balancing your camera later. Uh, that's pretty simple there. For the for the ends here, you'll need to somehow insert a bolt piece on either side. Uh, I have a bolt piece here. That's different from this one here. Basically, just use some epoxy or some other method you have to fasten a 3 8 inch bolt. 3 8 because that fits the best with the bearings we have here. They slip on and don't fit pretty well in there. So about 5 inches a bolt here, make sure it's perfectly straight in both directions, in there, and about maybe half an inch or a little bit more, three quarters of an inch here. The next piece going up here is the gimbal, and this is probably the hardest piece to make out of the whole glide cam. It needs to be very uh, smooth and precise. The way I made it has actually got a, uh, not a scooter wheel, but a rollerblade wheel because they're smaller and probably more precise than the bigger scooter wheels, like the Razor scooters. Um, I got a scooter wheel and kind of cut off the sides to make it a little more square and a little bit smaller because you don't want a big wheel here in the middle. It will be kind of bulky. So basically just cut off, like I did here, cut off the corners, make it a little bit square, just hand it down, and that'll give you the little, the center piece that actually spins around and that'll go right on top here. So when you cut that off, it'll slip onto there, and that that'll be the base of your gimbal there. To give the gimbal this up and down motion like this, 
you'll need to attach two bearings um, to the side of the, the rollerblade wheel. And you can get, get these bearings probably at any bike, bike shop. Or if you have an old razor scooter, you can pull these out. You'll need about five of them. Let's see here. What? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I need five. Um, you just attach two of these, basically. And the way you can attach those is you, all you do really is you put them on the side and you cut off the side, put them there, and get a long screw and just screw it right to there. Because there's a hard plastic piece in the middle, you can screw right to that. And make sure they're perfectly opposite each other here, like this. And then that'll give you the good, precise um, up and down motion there. To make this piece here, to which you attach your handle here, and on, which attaches onto your main wheel here, you basically need just some pieces of wood, um, preferably hardwood, but if you have softwood like pine or something like that, it'll work. Um, cut out three pieces here, one, one main piece for the handle, and two side pieces so that it slides to the middle, you can fit a bearing there into the middle, and so that it slides almost flush with the, with the center wheel here, so it's not really wobbly, because that will give you, it's not going to be very balanced that way when you put it all together. So just, just judging on the size of your wheel that you're using, you have to make this to fit. So the handle part here um, is probably the, the harder part to make on the gimbal. Um, what you'll need to do is, I've taken it off here. In the back part of a, the wood piece here that attaches, or whatever you made it out of, you'll need to drill a 7 8 wide hole to fit a bearing. Um, and that has to be exactly deep enough to fit one of these bearings in there. Almost flush with the top, with the piece here. A little bit, preferably sticking out. It's a tiny little bit, but not very much. And then drill a hole all the way through. For the actual handle here, what you'll need to do is find some kind of handle, whatever you want to use. I used like an old scooter handle, one of those razor scooter handles. Just took it off and use it for this. Or you can use like a, a piece of wooden dowel or anything that you like as a handle. Um, drill a hole in the top all the way through and fit either a quarter inch nut or a bolt or three eighths inch bolt to the top. Um, but make sure that doesn't actually touch the wheel when it goes through so make sure it fits perfectly in there. Make sure it's not too long so it doesn't rub your wheel because it's going to go all the way through almost. What you do then is you attach this bolt here with a nut here on the bottom just to secure the actual bolt. And then place one of those 7, uh, seven eighths inch bearings on top of that and then fasten that bearing down with another nut. And that will kind of give you the smooth motion here. And then before you do all that you'll need to cut out out of either plastic or metal I have here a little piece that'll go around the nut there to kind of hold down the bearing so it doesn't fall out uh, as you can see I'll show you in here in a second so cut a hole in there put this on put your bolt through and then attach your bearing so the nut goes right into here and as you can see it fits perfectly into there um, it sticks out a little bit so this piece here can squish it down and then that I screw down with some screws here on both sides and that gives it the good smooth sideways motion there. So the top part is called the platform where you actually mount your camera and adjust it left and right and forwards and backwards. Um, the way I made this is first of all I got a little piece of plywood here it's about three inches wide um, kind of a sturdy piece that I attached with really big washers to the actual bolt here and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, that's kind of where this piece, the platform, attaches onto. The actual platform, I made a little wooden frame about 5 inches wide by 6 inches. You can make it as big as you want as long as your camera fits on there. Um, so what I did is I got the side pieces to where you can move forwards and backwards. So like if your camera was here, it would be moving that way. Uh, I milled quarter inch holes all along the sides, on both sides, with a router bit in my router. You might need that to actually do this, otherwise I haven't, I haven't found an easier way to do this. Um, just drilling holes in the side is not going to be exact enough to actually balance your camera. So you'll need to actually mill holes in the side. If you have a different method of doing that, you can either cut two pieces and then glue little sections in there, or somehow you've got to make these long holes.
Um, and then the top part where you actually move your camera left and right kind of looks like this. Just a little flat, wide piece on top with also another hole in there so you can move your camera left and right. And these little kind of brackets on the side where it actually sits on top of this. So it kind of fits perfectly and it slides back and forth on there like this. Um, kind of just attach them with some glue and, and screws there or whatnot. Drill holes on the side and then to actually put it together, this would go right on top of here and you'd need little um, short bolts or at about a quarter inch or just make sure they fit in here. Um, and they go right to go both through this hole and this hole here. So right in the back of there, like this. And then you'll need either a wing nut or I got these little, I just found these special little nuts here that are really easy to use. This goes right over that. Like that. So you can adjust your camera forwards and backwards like that. So you put it on there, move it back and forth like that. Um, to actually make it, to actually mount your camera on here, you'll need another bolt, a quarter inch bolt. Make sure it's a quarter inch because the uh, the mounts in all the cameras are a quarter inch. So this goes right in the bottom. So you get just any kind of bolt like this and get a wing nut, preferably a wing nut like this, and put it on kind of backwards so it looks like this. And if you want, you can put a washer on there. And so your camera would go right on top of here, like this, facing that way or whatever. And then this would go underneath it. And then it will go through this piece here into your camera, like this. So your camera would be right here. Then you screw that on with the, the wing nut here and then tighten it down. So you can adjust when it's on there. You can kind of adjust your camera underneath, left and right like this, and then tighten it down. So that's kind of how the platform uh, works. It might be a little bit tough to make these these long holes, but they're, uh, they're pretty important. If you don't have those, you won't be able to balance it left and right, which is very important. So to assemble the whole light cam, start with your main shaft, um, attach your base plate here with the, with the bolt sticking out the other end. Make sure it's really tight on there and that it doesn't move if you bump it or something because when you're going to be actually using it, if you accidentally bump it on something, it might move and then your balance would be messed up. So put that on there, make sure it's tight, use a wrench or something. Um, then on your top bolt here, add a nut all the way down, screw it all up to the bottom, and then on top of that you're going to slide on your gimbal. I'm going to use this wheel just because my gimbal is on there, but kind of go on there like that, down there, and then on top of that put a little washer um, that kind of covers the, the bearing down there, and then cut a little piece of this bottom leg that you had left over from cutting the longer piece and put it on top. And then on top of that, that will kind of it's kind of like like a big extended nut kind of sort of thing. It's a really big spacer basically, and make sure it's all aligned perfectly there and straight. It kind of gives it a good look and also more stability when you'll put um, your thing on there. So then this is kind of too long, but you'll put your bottom bracket on there and tighten that down really good and tight so that it's not wall or anything. And make sure that your gimbal spills, still spins freely and then basically there you go that's, that's all your gimbal is on there your platform is mounted and you got your uh, bottom bracket and then you can balance it so to balance the glide cam take your camera with preferably a really wide angle lens because that makes the smoothest shots take off your lens cap make sure your battery is in there make sure it's set to the zoom you want in the focus because that'll if you change after you balance it um, on here that will kind of mess up your balancing. So to put it on there, use a little wing nut and a bolt, stick it through the bottom of the guitar bracket, put your camera on there like this, and screw it on, and just don't tighten it quite down because you're going to have to still balance it. There but just kind of in the center and not lock tighted. There we go about like that. And um, at this point what you want to do is add weight to the bottom so that when your camera is on here and you pick it up like this and drop it down, it takes about about three seconds to, to drop from vertical to the bottom here. So if I count it's about 
1,000, 2, 1,000, 3. It's a little bit too much. So to adjust that, you raise or lower the bottom piece here. So if I want it to be faster, I'll, um, I'll pick it up here, extend it longer. That way it'll fall really fast, like this. So it'll kind of swing down really fast. To make it slower, just lower it. So, see right about, it's a little bit too fast still. Right about. That would be good for now. So when you got that, um, when you got that all fit, figured out, you got the weights here. Um, you got to balance the camera left and right and forward and backwards. So right now, if I hold it, it kind of falls backwards. So you just uh, loosen these ones here, loosen these nuts, and move the camera forwards by small increments. Don't move it too much because even a little bit, a little, little, little movement. Um, changes the balance a lot, so test it again. A little bit too much there. Move it back just a tad. Let's see. Still not perfect. So the balancing will take just a little bit of time to get down because you kind of have to get used to your camera and where, it, where it's balanced at which point. So that's good enough. And then, say if your camera was to the side like this, over here, then you'd pick it up and it'd go to the, it fall over to the side, like that. So what you do there is loosen the bottom nut down here, move your camera, just by by small small increments, move them too, too much. Like I said, it'll, it'll mess it up. So then you test it again, and I'm kind of, I've kind of got it down for my camera, but after a few times of trying it, you'll get it perfectly. So when you pick it up, it should just hang perfectly, and when you move from side to side, it shouldn't wobble or anything like that. It shouldn't go back and forth, just hang there, like this. It's a little bit off, but you get the idea. Oops. So there you guys go. That's the tutorial on my version of the GladCam. Um, it's kind of, I'm still developing it, I'm, change, I'm adding new things, changing things all the time. So, if you have any questions, ideas, your comments, please leave them below. Uh, you know, like, favorite this video, if you like this, if you like my design, if you have any suggestions, please leave them. I'll consider them. But, there you go. A little, little, kind of a, not too detailed, but a little bit more detail on how to make the black camp. Alright guys, see you later.